So number 17 then from the 2015 advanced tyre, an integration for 9 marks, a rational expression with a factorised denominator, so that immediately suggests partial fractions. So with partial fractions, the first thing to notice here is though the numerator is greater than the denominator. That's x cubed, that's 2x cubed. This will divide into that. It'll divide in twice. So you could get the answer just by doubling this and subtracting it, which is of course equivalent to a division, but as well just multiplying it out separately. Right, so what have we got? There's four different terms here, so that'll just be on your lot of room as well. x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 3 going into 2x cubed. No x squared term, so I'll put that down, no x squared, minus x, minus 1, and obviously it goes in twice. So let's just double it and subtract it, which is what you do in a formal division anyway. So doubling it, 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 6. And subtracting it, carefully top take away bottom, would give you negative 1 plus 6, which is plus 5. Negative x take away 2x, which is negative 3x. And 0 take away negative 6, which is 6x squared. Now, rather than feeding this all into here and having to continue to write down the integration sign and that division, it'll do the partial fraction bit over here then. So the problem is then, this expression here, 2x cubed minus x minus 1 over x minus 3 times x squared plus 1 is equal to 2 plus this thing. 2 plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 5 over this. Right, I'll just revert back to that now. x minus 3, x squared plus 1. And there's the first two marks. The first mark was for knowing to divide and dividing. And the second mark was for expressing the result of that division. So the part that needs resolving into partial fractions is this part. So I should have 6x squared minus 3x plus 5 over x minus 3x squared plus 1 would become, and then choosing whatever you like, a over x minus 3, that's the first factor, didn't actually need that bracket, plus, now this is an irreducible quadratic, so we'll have to call that bx plus c. Now, that's another mark for knowing how to split that denominator into the linear term and the irreducible quadratic term. Now we need to multiply this out. So we've got, multiplying through it by the denominator, we've got a times, it's got that already, so it needs this one, x squared plus 1, plus bx plus c times x minus 3 should equal 6x squared minus 3x plus 5. That's another mark. There's four so far. Now it says, how are you going to find these three constants, the a, b, and c? Well, there's two ways. You could pick appropriate numbers to substitute in for x, or you could compare them side for side with corresponding coefficients. But certainly, I would use this one first. x equals 3, because that'll knock out that term and just leave me with 10a equals, but you've got a bit of calculation to do, so that we've got... 9, 54, 59, but take away 9, 50. Oh, that was a relief. It's always a relief when you get a nice number out as your answer, which means that A equals 5. However, I prefer to compare corresponding coefficients. So let's have a look at the x squared terms. To make up the x squared terms, I've got A on this side. I've got B as the only one in that part, and that should come to 6 altogether. And since A is 5, that means straight away that B is 1 and then compare the constant terms. Well, for the constant terms, again, I've got a, but all I've got with the constant term here is minus 3c, and that should come to 5. a is 5, so that must mean that c is 0. First two marks there, there's the third mark. Now it's just a case of pop this back in. So what that says is, instead of this rational expression, I've got this expression here, which is 2 plus a was 5, so it's 5 over the x minus 3. And for the bx plus c, I've just got x over the x squared plus 1. 
There's only the three marks left. That's not quite the mark yet. It says, putting it into the integral and one term correctly integrated. Well, that would be that one then, since that's the simplest one. So that gives me 2x. As soon as I do that, those two together then make the seventh mark. There's only two left. Now, this one is quite obviously a log. And luckily, the derivative of that denominator is just one, so it's not affected. So it's just 5ln x minus 3. Just automatically going in with the modulus. However, remember that modulus is just like a fuse it's to stop the log operating on a negative number. But if x is greater than 3, that can never be negative. So I don't really need that. I can just put an ordinary bracket in there. But what about this term? Well, this can be done by inspection. You can set it all out if you like. But the top is, is related to the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the denominator is 2x. That's simply x. So that must just be a half of ln of x squared plus 1. Derivative of ln, that goes to the denominator. And then you multiply by the derivative, which is 2x, but you're halving it, so it's x. That's called doing that by inspection, rather than having to do this and say, oh, x squared plus 1 dx, and then say, right, I'll let u equal x squared plus 1. So du by dx is going to be 2x. So dx is going to be du over 2x. And then we're going to pop back to this again. I've got x over u times du over 2x. And of course, the x's cancel, and I'm left with a half of 1 upon u du, which is a half of ln u, which pops back to a half of ln x squared plus 1. But you don't need to do that. It's a standard. If the top is a multiple of the derivative of the denominator, it'll just be log of the denominator with that multiple. And then there's a beef on the issue of what will you call the constant? I don't see what's wrong with just going in with c, even though I've used a c over here, because they were just short-lived variables just for the sake of that transformation there. So they have now disappeared from the problem. In the marking scheme, they've put that down as a k. But they've said, don't penalise putting in a c. But I don't see what's wrong with putting a c in, in the first place anyway. And the last two marks were one for doing this part and one for doing that part. One for this, one for that. Remembering, of course, that you're quite within your rights to say at this point here, no, I'm just going to use my little friendly curved brackets, because those terms can't be negative, and maybe even justify it afterwards just by a wee reminder, x is greater than 3. Mm.